Hey guys, Kane here. So it has been a while since I have done a video about artifacts and with the release of new premium artifacts as well as some of them becoming able to be bought for free, some strategies may change. For new players who just started the game or have started a little while ago, the first artifact you want to upgrade to level 20 is Wizards Well. It is hands down by far the best artifact, especially for PvP, to diminish your enemy's mana regeneration and increase your own. I think it is one of the most important ones to have at 20 and if you play for a couple of months you will eventually farm this to level 20 for free through the campaign. As you can see the other two blues I have not really upgraded as they do not pose too much value for the cost. The pieces are all upgraded however the magic damage heroes were known to drop off the meta like Sandro and there is not many other magic damage users in the game for the need to upgrade these two artifacts. CL though can sometimes very easily prove this theory wrong, but aside from the blue artifacts you will want to get the green artifacts level 20 as well. They are easy to upgrade and the cost is not that high for the bonuses provided. The first one, the elixir of life, will increase your unit's HP preventing them from easily dying and dying to spells early on, which is still very powerful on new servers. While the lucky horseshoe upgrades your unit's attack slightly, eventually this attack percent upgrade from Lucky Horseshoe will be almost irrelevant but that is not the reason why you would want to upgrade this artifact. The power of this artifact lies in the last three breakthroughs at plus 14, plus 17 and plus 20 where you get critical damage percent, accuracy and 80 critical rate on all of your units. These few are very powerful upgrades. Aside from blues and greens, you have purples and now you may see I have not upgraded many of them. This will differ from person to person and most of it is because what factions they play or desire to play. From the beginning my focus was mainly on Inferno and I make my factions based mainly around melee units. That being defensive, offensive, chargers and so on. Some casters do act as buffers or debuffers but they are not really there for the damage. Unless it's a free D in my composition but he's already decked out. The artifact skill upgrades they do cost a lot for the buff they would provide. So for example for a level 17 axe of ferocity from plus 14 I would need about 40 casting crystals to get some magic resistance plus about 5% attack and HP on all melee units. The cost for casting crystals is about 300 diamonds each so the value for these few buffs would be 12,000 diamonds and it's too much at the current moment for me as those buffs won't provide me that much benefit for the cost. Two artifacts in here you should not upgrade past level 5 and that is Armor of the Damned and Cloak of the Undead King. Both of these are either very bad or they are better. When it comes to the Bow of Sharpshooter, as I said I am not too focusing on archers or casters since they are not my main damage dealers. So I am upgrading the PCs but I am not upgrading the overall artifact past level 8, kind of similar to Archmage Codex. But you also may have noticed that some of these PCs are a lot higher level than the others and I will get back to that a bit later. When it comes to orange artifacts there are two types, premium ones which costs 100 bucks for 1 out of 6 pieces or non premium basic orange which are built out of 4 pieces like Titan's Thunder, Hawkeye and Spellbinder's Hat. Titan's Thunder you can easily get early of the game when you are showered with diamonds and there are some packs which give you the pieces in the campaign stages. You should only use the Titan's Thunder and any other active ability skill when they are level 2 because on most if not all the heroes if they are not level 2 they cost mana and if they cost mana your hero will almost never cast any ultimates due to mana drain of your own skills and this becomes a problem later when things start to become very competitive for ranks. Hawkeye was recently updated to provide damage reduction percent to units but only through the breakthroughs of the artifact on plus 2, plus 5, plus 8 and so on. 
I would not say this artifact is that good or that special, but if you have the means to upgrade the breakthroughs to like plus 5 or plus 8, it would be kinda decent, I guess. I don't know if it's worth the cost, but it has some nice decent stats on the artifact. And Spellbinder's hat? Honestly, I don't know about this one. It does seem good on mages like CL or anyone else that could keep them alive, but they just die too easy from almost anything and can even mess up some units like Magic Airship who can save one unit from death so ends up healing this elemental instead of one of the units on your field, which in fact is very bad. So aside from that, to me personally it is not very useful, but for some mages or so, or even gem, who could perhaps manage to keep it alive? I guess it may be okay. Now turning to premium artifacts and you will see that they are all over the place for me. And yes, I have played this game for like a year. I was upgrading Dragon Father and unlocking the Sword of Frost before Angelica Lines appeared to be free. My goal was kind of to make Dragon Father all plus four to upgrade the pieces with the Dragon Sigils for more stats. But the new artifacts took a little bit more priority. But eventually I will get back to this. Now if you would ask me if this artifact is important and the answer would be yes or maybe. The first person on a new server to get this unlocked more or less easily wins Pantheon or Battle of the Gods and it may help you out a lot in Clash of Gods which is the cross server one. But will this help you out in the long run? And the answer would be maybe. All because the scaling of units and you not being able to upgrade this fast enough, these dragons even on say level 5 or level 8, they die very quickly. I don't know about you, but I had no issues killing a kraken on my server with level 8 dragon. Sometimes it took probably 3 seconds, sometimes 10 to kill the dragon. Anything lower than level 8 would probably just die from area of effect skills so you can deem it as would perhaps benefit you early on ranks but kind of diminishes as you go on as it can die very easy of course if you're a whale or a kraken this dragon father artifact does have some pretty decent buffs at plus 5 or plus 8 so keep that in mind going towards sword of frost now there has been plenty of discussions where many people would prefer Sword of Frost over say Armageddon's Blade because of the huge area silence and stuff like that. As I mentioned before, many heroes like Astral, perhaps even Gem, those who will need time to stack up to win, will always prefer Sword of Frost because it buys them time to buff up or perhaps even deny skills of many bursty units. At higher stages this artifact has CC which becomes even better since in addition to the silence blocking skills, they will block normal attacks with the freeze now too, so less damage would be done towards your field. But the further the game goes, the more specific premium artifacts will be required for many heroes. If we take Seron and Dragon Mutare, two faction leaders who benefit from the burn effect and it increasing their overall damage and effectiveness, both of these heroes need speed in killing the opponents, which means they want the buffs and debuffs that Armageddon's Blade has, which is 10% damage reduction on the enemy that is being hit by this skill and if they are burning plus 20% unit damage towards that unit for dungeon units or special effects in Inferno faction against burning units. Inferno has many effects like some units get critical value like devil, others will increase in their own damage reduction versus burning targets and there will be many more interesting features in the future with say even venom spawn as one of the venom spawn skills states that he amplifies the burn on the enemy. I think he had a small percentage of his own attack added into the burn or something like that and many more things. While the burn is indeed good, some or many burns can be dispelled in the future by some supports or other features. So the more burns you have on your field, the better it will be for you. Which is why Chinese servers prefer Armageddon's Blade for fast damage dealing heroes since it has a lot of buffs, debuffs and also damage. While other heroes who want to stack up before they do the damage, they require time. Which sort of 
Frost can provide. I think that would be as good as an explanation as I could give, I guess. After I get Angelic Alliance plus 2, I will start saving my orange tears for Armageddon's Blade, whenever it comes out to the artifact shop as well, probably a few months from now. And now for Angelic Alliance. This is hands down probably the best artifact in this game. Because of this artifact here, you do not upgrade your armor of the damned, because they go into the same slot, in the skill settings. And you can even use this from plus one since it adds attack percent plus attack speed to all of your units and a chance for revival on one of them. Plus two makes the chances 75% and also some of us noticed that either there is a hidden buff that is not shown or some units tend to perform a lot better on plus two angelic alliance. I honestly have no clue how to explain this since it is hard to test. But quite a few, and myself included, noticed some changes in overall performance by other players, not just by the revive. So more or less, we have gone through just upgrading the artifacts, but there is one more special feature in here, and that is also very important. And that is ranking up your artifact pieces. I believe I have reached this far as I am now because I was very efficient with my own upgrades and focusing just on a specific route. And that is upgrading attack percent and HP percent pieces first, which also had some additional hero stats added on to them. So for example, if you take a look at the Axe of Ferocity, all of them are four stars, since all of those pieces are insanely good. If you check Poe of the Sharpshooter, I even made the bow plus 13 just because the buffs the piece gives, and that is attack percent and hero attack. While the other are pretty much pointless to me because at the moment I will not upgrade this artifact skill past level 8. Armor of the Damned, you see two pieces are four stars, but one is two stars and the other is three. That is because the buffs they would provide to me are minimal or not needed, since I only want attack percent and HP percent plus hero stats, which both of the two four star purple pieces have. You can see the same situation on Archmage Codex, one piece is extremely good, the other is also decent but it's just mainly defensive or so. The same for blues. Since I do not run heroes that revolve around their own magic damage, I only play heroes like Seron, Dragon Mutair, or Gem, and so on, who are all about their units. For me, it's beneficial to upgrade stats that would buff my entire field and stats that would make my hero do more damage. That is just my two cents on this matter. Of course, those people who play Sandro, CL, Solmir as their mains and so on may want to upgrade magic damage percent and hero intelligence, since as I mentioned even a long time before that this game will be all about your own units and it is becoming mainly units, while most heroes just become buffers. Anyways, that's it for this video guys, thanks for watching and stay safe.